What's going on guys? Junior's Fishing Company with another inline video. So I've uploaded a ton of small, medium, kind of medium, large inlines and I thought the next couple I would do would be nice big baits. So today, or right now, I'm going to do just a bigger musky bait, not necessarily huge double tens, stuff like that. I don't throw a ton of huge inlines like that. If I'm going to throw a big bait like that, I usually throw like a bigger, you know, something like rubber or something like that. I don't throw like the giant quadruple tinsel skirt, double tens or whatever. I don't throw much of those, so I don't make a lot of them. I've got two awesome skirts from Lower Parts Online. These are Pro Flash Magnum 9 inch skirts. So they're 9 inch silicone skirts. Um, just picture kind of like a bass jig skirt or a spinnerbait skirt kind of on steroids. These things are massive and they're actually kind of heavy too. I've got, I'm just going to go 0.051 wire. This is actually a 12 inch piece. You definitely, I'm not going to need much more than half this or a little bit more but <clears throat> lure parts online either sells it in 8 or 12 inch so I buy quite a bit of 12 just to be safe if I do go a little bit bigger I'm first going to I'm gonna you do a double blade on this one and these I'm gonna do two Indiana size 6 silver Hildebrandt blades and you can see just how um, reflective these are. They're super nice. I'm going to beef up my clevis as well. This is a number six, I believe. So for the smaller the number in a clevis, the smaller it is. So most of the clevis I've used in these videos, maybe even all, have been size four. And these are size six. And it's crazy how big of a difference in strength you get from four to six. You really don't need much bigger than this. These things, I don't know if I've ever bent one of those. Now I'm gonna do a double blade. So I'm gonna get that first one fed on. Then I'm gonna grab my second blade and my second clevis. And I'll get that fed on and get these two on there. And these blades, if, if you're thinking about using a Hildebrandt blade, I know these seem a little bit smaller. These are six. Again, blade size, a six Hildebrandt might be bigger than a number eight Indiana in another brand or whatever. So you just got to be careful. These sixes are pretty big. You might not be able to tell from the video, but these sixes are going to be just plenty and for some reason these blades push way more water than even some you know eight or tens that i've thrown of in different brands i'm going to put on a 5 32nd inch bead and then i've got this is a 3 8 ounce just a brass it, it it, it's for sure brass. It's not quite shiny enough for me to call this gold, uh, but it's just a metal body weight. And I'm just throwing a little bit of gold in there. I'm gonna do silver blades, but I just, I was going back and forth and I thought the little bit of gold, I think is gonna put off some good, some good flash. I've got 5 16th inch metal beads and I've got five sitting here, but I don't know how many I'm gonna put on. So I'm just, I, I just put a couple on and I'm just basing it off of how low it goes. And so I can see my blade is still a little bit lower. So I'm gonna put a third on. And then I just wanna think right now. So I've got two treble hooks right here. So I'm, I've got my blades on there nice and loud for you. And I've got, just to show you, this is the kind of the setup I use. If I'm going to put a second treble on an inline, and I've got one in the back already, 
I'll put a second one up here, but I'll actually put it in between these beads like this, and then I would have my skirt right here. So I'd have that treble up here, and then I'd have one down here. And so I usually add an extra bead just to help, because you don't want to put it on below your last bead where your skirt is. I just think it's kind of risky. So sometimes I will add another bead. I'm gonna add a fourth one just for that reason alone. I'm gonna take my skirts, and these are relatively even in length, so I'm not worried about putting the shorter end on top or the shorter end on bottom or whatever. I'm just gonna kind of flip them. And these are two-sided skirts, so you wanna make sure that you get as much even coverage as you can. And I've got some of these that have stuck. I've used this skirt before, so it's been wet. So sometimes they stick together. I'm gonna feed that right as close to the middle as I can. And I'm gonna flip this whole thing upside down, let those fall out of the way, get the deer hair that's sticking in there out. Deer hair gets everywhere. I'll take my second skirt again, not super difference in length. Even though there is a little difference here, I'm gonna put this one on bottom just because it will help add just a little bit more length to my bait. That one split pretty good. I'll feed this on. And you can kind of see now what this bait is gonna end up looking like. Just like that. So it's not gonna be an absolutely massive, but you can see how long this skirt is. These skirts are really, really nice. The only, the only negative I've found in silicone is that if you reel them really fast, they do kind of ball up a little bit, but I've never been that picky. I, I really like silicone in the water. So I'm gonna add another weight on the bottom of this for a little bit of balance and it'll help me cast it just a little bit farther. This is just a quarter ounce um, egg sinker, just traditional. You can go to Amazon and get 150 of them for like 15 bucks. I'm gonna get this bad boy bent up. We'll see you after. Okay, so now when finishing off your inline um, to make the other loop on the bottom, um, I'm gonna show you the steps of how to do that. So when you make your inline, the loop that comes with it is gonna be the top, and then you're gonna bend out whatever you don't need. And the first rule when you're doing this is you wanna make sure that on the top of your bait, you leave a quarter inch or less um, to allow that clevis to spin without hitting um, the top bend in your wire. So I've got these little pliers that help create kind of the, um, the nice little loop. So we can just pretend I left this blank so that you, you're gonna be able to see everything well. So I'm gonna take this right at the bottom where the widest part is and I'm gonna bend it about parallel with itself. And then I can take it over to my little screw here. And I'm gonna wanna make sure that this blank line is down towards me. I'm gonna bend it, holding the other one, about 45 degrees off of that, off of my screw. And I can take it off now it'll get a little crooked, so take a pair of pliers and you're going to straighten that out. You're going to go back to your screw and you're going to rotate it one, two, three is usually good. You can go four if you want. Now I've got all of this tag end, so I'm going to take my wire cutters. I'm gonna get as close as I can to that bottom part, and I'm gonna snip it off. There will be a little piece sticking out here. 
um, you can mash it down if you want. The, really the only thing you want to make sure is that you come back here and straighten this out again and you will have your inline ready to fish. Wire's bent. I've got, this is a four aught VMC Gladiator treble hook. And I've got another one right here. I've got two split rings on this one. And I've got one split ring on this one. They're all 80 pound. And 80, 80 pound is definitely heavier than you really need to go. But on a bait like this, I'm not worried about adding length to this hook or anything because these skirts are so long anyway. So I went with an 80 pound. And these VMC Gladiator hooks are unbelievably strong. I mean, you could honestly pull, you could like pull a car with these things. I mean, don't do it. Don't, don't pull your car with them to see. But these things are crazy thick. I mean, you can't even bend these a little bit with all the pressure that you can put on it. So, I haven't put on my second hook yet. And I might not even put it on right now. You can see where that hook is. It sits nice and low on this bait. And if I put another one, again, I'll put two split rings on this treble hook, and I'm going to put it right in between the second to last and the last bead, and that will kind of just sit just like this. And you can see now I've got most of this bait besides the blades that have a hook. And so if you get a fish that nips, you know, on a figure eight or something like that, it'll end up hitting this. But if you get a fish that hits this mid cast right in the middle, you usually want to have a hook there. You don't necessarily need to because this bait isn't so big where a fish is just going to hit right here. It might come in like that. But yeah, I just wanted to show you what I would do. And if you've ever musky fished, I'm sure you've done this a million times, but um, you just put that little treble hook right there and you're good to go. But with these Hildebrandt blades, I think this inline is going to absolutely crush it. I'm excited to, to throw this Junior's Fishing Company, juniorsfishing.com. See you in the next one.